Hi guys, how you doing? It's Sunday today and obviously on Sundays we try and chill out as much as possible because we've got a super busy week ahead. So I've decided that today I would film a little bit of a low format meal prep video because quite often on a Sunday I do try to prepare our food in advance um, and I thought it'd be interesting for you guys to see that. So what I'm going to do is I'll put all the links to recipes and stuff in the description below so you can check them out and um, I guess I should probably get started. <laughs> So for my meal prep breakfast, I'm gonna make a big frittata and cut it into slices and then pop it into some of my Tupperware boxes. I've got some cherry tomatoes, some prosciutto, some organic free range eggs and some spinach. And then I'm gonna bung it all in there, put it in here and boom, frittata. So this spinach I'm doing, um, I'm gonna wilt down and I'm gonna put it into my breakfast I think it's like a full English breakfast, I'll call it. A full English breakfast for tartar. So there we go. As you can see, it completely disappeared from what you could see earlier, meaning that it's it's wilted. Um, and that I can then put back into my frittata a bit later on. Right, so I'm going to crack six eggs in because I like a big, thick frittata. Oh, screw it. I'm going to go with seven because we've got one left over and I feel sorry for it. There we go. Just beat it, beat it, beat it. So I've got some prosciutto here. I'm gonna just rip it into bits and put it into my into my frittata mix. So I've added in my prosciutto now, give that a good mix. Then also what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my spinach into that. Let's just shove some of that in. So I'm gonna chop up some tomatoes. I usually put in about six, but it really doesn't matter how many you put in actually. You can put in as many or as little as you want. It's not a requirement if you don't like tomatoes. Sack off the tomatoes. So a bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna put the grill on now. So grill large area. So now it's as simple as just pouring this in. So just pour this in here. You can see that there's quite a lot. And then before everything start settling down. I'm gonna just put these tomatoes in. So I'm just gonna let it cook now. As you can see, it's frying away nicely and the grill is on ready for me to do the other side in a short while. But whilst that's heating up, I think it's probably best that I tidy away as I go because I'm terrible for tidying away as I go, but also I can't cope with a messy kitchen. I'm, I absolutely hate a messy kitchen. So it's been about five minutes at kind of medium heat and it's starting to smell really, really nice. You can kind of see that the white edges have now got a little tinge of brown to them. The top has cooked a little bit more, but as you can see, it's still got quite a way to go. So at this stage, I think it's time. I think it's time for it to go in the grill. So we're gonna put this in here. I just put it in the middle of the oven. So it's been about five minutes and that's, ooh, that looks amazing. Very happy with that. frittata all ready and done and prepped for the week. Um, now I thought I'd make my berry belly friendly smoothie which I'm gonna take with me when I'm out and about. Okay so I've got a ton of frozen fruit out of the freezer. Frozen fruit is one of my like biggest tips ever, it's the best. So yeah I'm putting just about 35 grams ish of blueberries in there. So just put these blueberries in here now. I'm just gonna put in two frozen strawberries into my bag. 20 grams of frozen raspberries, 55 grams of frozen pineapple. So I decided to call this smoothie a berry belly friendly smoothie just because there's lots of goodness in this for your stomach. So for instance, this pineapple I'm putting in now, it's got some really good digestive enzymes in it. And then I'm also going to be putting in some flaxseed, which I think is really good. It's like just a gentle fiber. So yeah. And last but not least, I'm going to put some spinach in. This was just spinach that I didn't use in my frittata, which I thought Waste not, want not. Bung it in the smoothie. Okay, so here's my uh, belly, berry, berry belly friendly smoothie. Um, it's a bit of a tongue twister, but I kind of like calling it that. Um, in a bag ready, and I'm gonna put this in the freezer until I need it. And I'm also gonna make four more now, so that each day of the week coming up, I can just get this out of the freezer, put it into my blender, add some dairy-free milk, make sure it's low FODMAP as well, um, some nut butter, I always go for just standard old peanut butter because I like it the most. Um, and also some flaxseed as I mentioned earlier. Put them all in as well, blitz it up, 
put it in your bottle and you've got a really good smoothie to take with you for the day. So I'm now going to get on with making my other berry belly friendly smoothie bags um, and get them in the freezer ready for the week ahead. <laughs> This week's lunches I thought I would make a healthy noodle pot, sort of like a pot noodle but super tasty, super simple and something you could just take along with you wherever you go. So first off I'm just going to start by grating some carrot. Right okay so that's that's all the carrot I need so let's get. But then also I want to do some, I want to do some other veggies within my pot noodle. Um, and I'm going to do some courgettes. So I've got my courgette and I'm just gonna spiralize this baby. Let's just jam it into there. And just get some, some noodle-like things. But this isn't what's gonna be the noodles. This is just like, it just looks really good and it, and it works really well when you've got actual noodles within your pot noodle. Right, so all my preparation is done and first thing to put into my jar now is my dried rice noodles. So I'm gonna put them in here now. So next up, I'm gonna pop in some of my spiralized courgette. Then I'm going to put in my carrot, this looks really super colourful now which is nice. And you can really push it down, it doesn't matter, you're not hurting that carrot. So next up I'm going to put some chives in, I've got this really ingenious pair of scissors which I've recently bought and I love, so I'm just going to chop some of those in. And then, you know how much I love spinach, I've had it all in all my dishes today. Um, I'm just going to shove some of that in just to finish it off. So we've got the noodles, we've got the veggies, but now it's time for us to make a sort of Vietnamese style faux broth. So I'm not going to put the spices directly into the jar, I'm actually going to put them into this little thing that comes with the jar, which is really really cool. Okay so firstly I'm going to put in a little bit of five spice, some minced ginger, red chilli paste, fish sauce, love fish sauce, great in Vietnamese food, garlic infused olive oil, um, I'm going to squeeze in a little bit of lime and then finally I'm going to crumble in about a quarter of a stock cube. Now obviously your stock cube needs to be low FODMAP and this one certainly is. This is a ham stock cube um, and it's by Noor and these are gluten free and they have no bad things in them, no onion, no garlic, um, so they're perfect. But really do be careful because so many stock cubes have um, onion, garlic but just things that aren't low FODMAP, so make sure you check on the packaging before you put that in. We've put everything in our jar, all our veggies and noodles, we've got all our spices ready for the broth in here, we just press that down, keep it nice and tight, put that on top, nice and tight, and there you go. So there's my noodle pot, um, I'm just going to keep this in the fridge until I'm ready to take it away with me on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day this week, and then when I want to eat it, all I have to do is boil the kettle and add about 250ml of hot water to it. But one thing I must say is make sure that your little jar, if you're using a jar like this, is heat proof. Because you don't want to have a jar that like cracks or anything. If it's not, no worries, you could just pour this into a bowl and have it like that. I'm now going to make a few more of these for the rest of the week. <music> prepping my dinner for the next week um, and these Ziploc bags are going to be very useful. I'm going to be marinating um, chicken breasts in five different ways, so five different flavours, five different delicious meals and yeah I'm going to do that right about now. So I've got my trusty Ziploc bag and first up we're going to be making um, a Chinese chicken marinade. So simply just get our chicken breast and put it into the bag. Firstly I'm going to add um, a teaspoon of five spice um, and then I'm going to put in a bit of minced ginger which I love minced ginger as a, as a flavour. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of brown sugar just because it will nicely caramelise everything and when it's marinating that really really helps. A tablespoon of gluten free soy sauce, pour that in, make sure it's gluten free of course. A tablespoon of our trusty garlic infused olive oil and then it is a case of just zipping up the ziplock bag, having no taking all the air out of it and mixing it up. Just mixing it, massaging that chicken breast, making sure it's getting all that goodness into it. Okay, so there's the first one done. Okay, so the next marinade is gonna be a peri peri marinade. Put it in your 
the Ziploc bag. So first we've got a quarter of a teaspoon of oregano. Just go put in there. A quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. I've got a little bit just under a quarter teaspoon of chilli paste. Which is very nice. I'm going to put a little bit of garlic infused olive oil in it. You're starting to see a pattern here, aren't you? How much I love garlic infused olive oil, but it just works. I've even got like my mum using garlic infused olive oil these days, even though she's not low FODMAP, but she just knows and appreciates how great it is. But I'm just going to squeeze a bit of lime in. Not too much, not too little. And then finally, I just want to put a tiny amount of salt in, not too much, just a little pinch of salt. And again, we just want to get all the air out of the bag and massage it. And there you go. That's my peri peri chicken breast number two done. Right, so next up, chicken breast number three. This is going to be my mild curry marinade. So let's get our, wow, these chicken breasts are good. So I'm going to start by adding some, a couple of tablespoons of coconut milk. Pour that in there. Next up, I need to put a teaspoon of curry powder in. Now, most curry powders that you'll find in the supermarkets are definitely not low FODMAP. They definitely have garlic and onion or just garlic in them. So I've made my own low FODMAP curry powder, which I'll link in the description to my recipe, which is on the blog. Um, it's really simple to do. Just make it in bulk like I've done here. And then you can add this to your bag. Um, and then trusty lime, squeeze a bit of that in. Then you know the drill by now. We'll just close the bag. No air in it, get that all out. And then we just literally massage it. And there you have it. Number three, my mild curry chicken breast. Right everyone, so chicken breast number four is barbecue marinade flavor. Okay, so barbecue sauce. Now barbecue sauce is really difficult to make low FODMAP. It's difficult to find low FODMAP. I feel really lucky that I found something that is low FODMAP. This is Foddy Foods Low FODMAP Food Company traditional barbecue sauce. I feel like I'm cheating here a little bit because this already is a sauce, but I'm making a marinade, I'm not making a sauce, so it's kind of different. So I'm gonna add three tablespoons of barbecue sauce to this. Oh yeah. And to finish this off, I'm just gonna put in um, one and a half tablespoons of gluten-free soy sauce. Obviously with barbecue, um, you don't have to just use chicken, you could use salmon. I mean, you probably think I haven't finished, but I have. That's literally all you need to put on that one. So let's seal that bag up. This looks proper barbecue like This looks really good. There we go. Pretty good. Number four, over and out. So finally, I'm onto my last chicken marinade and this is gonna be Mexican. So firstly, you're gonna want to have a little bit of cayenne pepper, smoked paprika, some chili paste, a bit of heat. Oh, I've got it all over the bag. I'll just have to massage it even more. A little bit more than you have before with all the others of lime. So I'd say about a tablespoon's worth of lime instead of a teaspoon. And then to finish it off, we want to have a tablespoon of garlic infused olive oil. Put that in. And that is literally all we need to make a delicious Mexican chicken breast. So there is my Mexican chicken, the final one. All five chicken breasts, all marinated completely differently and they look and smell awesome. Right, so that was intense. I'm I'm quite tired now, actually, but I'm so glad and it makes me so relieved to think that for the next week we've got breakfast, a snack, um, lunch and dinner sort of all prepared so that I can get home from doing some stuff or before I go out in the morning. I've got something ready to eat and I don't have to worry. Okay, as you might be able to see behind, I've got quite a lot of washing up to do. As you can imagine, I, I meant to do it as I went along. I didn't, I failed. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of these, please let me know by leaving a comment below. Um, and also, just so that you know, all the recipes will be linked in the description below so that you can go and check all of them out. And, you know, just let me know if you try them because I'd really like to hear your thoughts on them because I think they're delicious, but do you. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and obviously I'll try my best to do lots more videos like this, and yeah, have a great day, a great week, and I'll see you soon. Bye!